David Brewster here with Note 3 for All, and this is Three Ty Tabor Licks from 2016. And Ty Tabor is the guitarist and co vocalist in uh, King's X, and I did do a chord play uh, surrounding the music of King's X. That was last summer. You might have to scroll back, you know, a few episodes or a few months to kind of find it on the channel here. But I definitely have been a King's X fan ever since I was in high school. And I just noticed them in magazines, and they started popping up on MTV and Headbangers Ball. And the next thing I knew, I was listening to them. And, you know, very dynamic band, very expressive. Definitely a prog rock, you know, fan's dream, where it's like, okay, these Beatlesque kind of harmonies and lush, you know, chords and progressions and this, you know, strong, you know, melodic sensibility and rhythmic, you know, interest and everything. There's a lot going on in their music, for sure. And they're working on a new album, and I simply can't wait to hear... Uh, the new King's X record. They've been talking about it and posting about it on social media for months and kind of building that hype and excitement. And I'm definitely stoked to hear uh, the new King's X album. This is going to be a really interesting lesson because the footage I found is very inspiring. You know, and Ty is just kind of taking an extended solo live uh, during this concert footage that I found. And one of the most interesting things uh, that we're going to talk about and look at in this lesson, aside from some of his licks and his music, is the good old Ebo. And um, for those of you that don't know what an Ebo is, uh, I know for a long time I'd heard about it, and I heard people talking about Ebos, and I didn't really understand, you know, what it was. So I was like, what's an Ebo? And it wasn't until I finally just broke down, paid the hundred bucks or whatever it was, and bought one. And then I took it out, and there's packaging, there's kind of like a demo, like a demo, you know, like little mini CD in the box where you can kind of hear, you know, different instruments and different ways you can manipulate uh, the Evo. But it really was one of those things I literally had to buy, take it home, kind of play with it, and then I understood how cool it was, where it's like, oh, wow, this is really cool. It's been featured, you know, in dozens and dozens, if not hundreds of popular songs, and music, you know, since like the, the 1970s, somewhere around there. So it's been around for a long time, and you've heard it in music and probably didn't even realize what it was. So if you take an Evo and get it out of the box, you'll see it's in this little velvety kind of, you know, soft bag. But you pull it out of that little bag, and then you literally have this, which I know that looks kind of space age and kind of, kind of wild, like, whoa. But it's literally, um, you know, there's a battery inside, like a 9-volt battery. And this area right here is going to hover over the strings of your guitar. And there's a little area right in the middle that's kind of recessed. And that's the string that you're going to basically target using the Evo. And what happens when you turn it on, it creates this hyperactive magnetic field right here. And it just basically, you know, is uh, there's magnets. and like I'm not really sure the actual... Uh, the actual way that it works, but it does create a hyperactive magnetic field when you put it next to electric guitar strings or acoustic guitar strings as well. Uh, since they're metal, it causes the string to start vibrating. And, you know, if you put a fresh battery in this, you can literally sustain a single string for the life of the battery. So if you're familiar with sustainers that are built in a guitar, it's similar to that. It's actually, you know, what we had before we had a sustainer. But one thing I've really noticed uh, using the Evo and kind of playing with it, it's great for bringing out, you know, melodies and melodic lines, you know, in songs. So if you're recording or, you know, writing some music, it's a really good way to kind of sneak, you know, some additional harmony or additional parts in the mix. And you can kind of mix it really low, you know, if you're recording some music. But um, I'm just going to do like a quick demonstration because Ty actually is using an Evo during part of the solo. So if I turn this on, I'm just going to target the G string right here. And I don't know if you can hear that, but it's already making the G string vibrate. As soon as I 
don't take it away from the string, of course, obviously the string stops vibrating. But you can hear as soon as I turn that on and put it by the string, there it goes. It does take a second. You know, it kind of takes it a second to begin uh, vibrating. One big benefit from working with the Evo and practicing, you know, scales and melodies and things like that is it forces you to play the guitar in a horizontal fashion, you know, across a single string. So if you're locked into boxes and scale positions and things like that, it really does kind of open up your mind to, you know, distances between notes in a scale or in a melody, and you really have to think, you know, in a different way on the guitar, which um, even just practicing scales like that, like single string scales, um, it's kind of fun. It kind of makes it a little bit more exciting. You know, obviously you're not going to be worried about picking or, uh, you know, picking technique because it's replaced, you know, the, your pick and your pick hand, but you do kind of have this, you know, new way of practicing scales. You can work on legato, you know, ideas and stuff like that. It's pretty cool. And here's a clip from this live footage, and this is actually the beginning of Ty's solo. It's really just an extended jam, you know, during the song. But you can see he reaches over, you know, back and goes back to his amp, reaches over, grabs the ebo. He actually strums the strings with an ebo, almost like a pick at first, and then he starts using it. So here's this live clip, you know, with a little taste of some of this ebo action. first lick is actually during Ty's Ebo moment, you know, during the solo. And uh, the line that he plays, it's all in the G string, and it's basically, you know, basically based around G major or G Ionian. And he's just phrasing this, you know, really interesting melodic line, uh, something like this. <laughs> There he's really just sliding, you know, G into A, and then uh, he's kind of playing with that uh, B and A right there. So he's really just creating this melody. And then he starts cruising down, you know, G Ionian or G major. And then he starts doing this really cool lick uh, based around the open G string, where he's using hammer-ons and pull-offs and a slide. Something like that, loosely. Now, of course, if you don't have an Ebo, um, you can definitely play that with just, you know, you're picking fingers like this. kind of loses something, you know, without that Ebo effect, and it has that almost, you know, kind of bagpipes or this kind of sitar almost kind of sound, which is really cool. So one more time with the Ebo. The next lick is still based around uh, G Ionian, the major scale, and now we're not using the Evo anymore. So during the solo, Ty kind of wrapped up, you know, the Evo moment, put it back on the amp, and then he starts playing the guitar in a traditional way. And he starts doing this kind of melodic line based, like I said, around G major or G Ionian, and he slowly starts kind of creeping up the scale, and then he starts doing this fast kind of hammer on pull off lick at the end, something like this. <laughs> So right there he starts on G, and then he starts going up the scale. Something like that. And then he starts doing this uh, hammer-on pull-off uh, pattern. And 
And right there at the end, he just ends on that E note. So one more time there. The last lick still revolves around G major, and he's kind of playing out of G major pentatonic, which you can also think of that as E minor pentatonic because they're relative, you know, major and minor. And it also reminds me of Eric Johnson a little bit as far as the way it's phrased, and it looks like this. <laughs> And there you can see we're starting, you know, on G. And he basically starts with that first lick twice. And then he starts cruising down what I nickname the pentatonic highway, where he's really just playing with this fingering. And there you can see we're really just doing that whole step, you know, pattern. So when you start with that first little part there, right there you're going to start shifting and you're combining like three different positions of G major pentatonic or E minor pentatonic depending on which you know key you want to look at it in. Um, but we're doing this in G, so think you know G major pentatonic. And you can hear at the end he kind of started like another phrase and did like a little bending uh, movement there. And he keeps going, of course, after that. All right, that's going to wrap this look at three Ty Tabor licks from 2016. And I'm sure you probably noticed I didn't include a bonus lick. Um, but technically, I did do the Ebo demonstration at the beginning, which I kind of felt like that was the bonus lick. So if you were expecting an extra little treat, um, I put it at the beginning of the video instead of the end, but uh, definitely if you're not familiar with Ty Tabor or the music of King Sex, you know, dive in. They've got a lot of music, a lot of albums, and even though they've kind of stylistically shifted a little bit here and there, they've primarily stayed, you know, very true to their sound and their, and to themselves, you know, the entire time. And whether it's, you know, an early album or a more recent one, I mean, you can hear it's King's X. They have a very signature stamp you know, in their music and in their sound. So uh, anyway, leave some feedback and some comments. Please subscribe to Late Night Lessons, and I'll be back before you know it with more content and material. Thank you.